It is spring, flowers are blooming, the birds are singing, and occasionally the sun is shining. One of my favorite ways to celebrate this season is by making flower crowns. I think it's a way to feel very mindful and present in the season and aware of all the little subtle shifts between seasons as well. As much as there are four major seasons in the year, there are also different little shifts within those seasons because if you look at the earliest flower of the year, the snowdrop, they've already gone away and disappeared from the landscape. Currently, the wood anemone or windflower is overtaking our woods. It is in full bloom, but pretty soon that will pass away and be replaced by the bluebells. So each of these little shifts within spring are so fleeting. And when I sit down and take a few moments to make a flower crown over whatever using whatever blossoms are currently in bloom. It just makes me so much more present in this season and also more aware of what is happening around me in the landscape. It helps me to learn about what flowers are around me and what their properties are. So I really enjoy it and I thought I would take you along with me today as I make a couple different flower crowns. Presently, there's a mix of primroses, cuckoo flowers, wood anemone, and dandelions blooming in abundance. I want to make a flower crown that features a mix of blossoms, so I'm gathering a little bit of everything. Keeping it buried also means I don't overpick any one variety, although with the way the wildflowers are growing this year, there seems to be no danger of that. To help identify the flowers, I'm using a vintage copy of an observer's book of wildflowers, and here's the description they have for the cuckoo flower or lady smock. In all moist meadows and swampy places, the rambler may come across a multitude of wavy flowers which look white in mass but at close quarters are seen to be pale pink or lilac. The country name in many places is milkmaids or cuckoo flower. To make a flower crown, I start with a base made from either very bendy branches or a vine. I made these bases over winter with willow branches. To attach the flowers to the base, you can use floral wire or floral tape. Floral tape is pretty handy, but I tend to use floral wire because I can reuse it. Fresh flower crowns don't last forever, and if they don't dry pretty, then I like to unravel the wire, return the dried flowers to nature, and reuse my base and wire on new crowns. I like to make small groupings of the flowers, starting with kind of like the biggest ones and then putting smaller surrounding ones around it. They're little posies, if you will. I then attach each of these little posies individually to the base using my floral wire. Overlap each posy on the previous one and you'll hide the wire and you'll also hide the base so you get a really full look. 
Making all the little small bunches before I attach them to the base also helps me keep a balance of flowers throughout the crown so I don't have one area that's kind of dominated by wood anemone and another area that's dominated by cherry blossom. I just love how this one came out. It is such a beautiful mix of colors and it's so full and lush looking and it just screams spring to me. When I picture spring in my head, it is scenes like this, vast, colorful spreads of flowers, switching my wardrobe from cozy winter layers to light spring dresses. Of course, reality isn't always quite like that. We are still in that awkward period of spring where it feels like summer in the sunshine and winter in the shade, or as is more common in my region, winter in the rain. Our highest temperature last week was 10 degrees Celsius, or around 50 Fahrenheit. Which means, as much as I'd like to dress cute in cottagecore every day, some days I do find myself hiding away inside or walking the dog in an old pair of leggings and oversized iron jumper. Since I couldn't get outside to the fresh flowers on this wet day, I decided to make a dried flower crown inside that still embraces the spring spirit. And honestly, I'm very okay with that. As much as I love aesthetics, I'm all for having certain days or elements of my life being non-aesthetic. People are always surprised when I talk about wearing jeans or trousers, but I don't feel a need to be cottagecore 24 seven. Part of my joy in dressing stems from the ability to choose what I want to wear, and equally having days when I don't have to put a lot of thought into my outfit. I really feel that an all or nothing attitude holds us back. I'm interested in slow living and ethical fashion, but sometimes these ideas feel overwhelming. How do I choose slow when I have bills to pay? And I want to save towards retirement one day. How can I shop more ethically when I live somewhere rural with limited options, when it comes to just about everything? Sometimes it can take over an hour to drive to a charity shop or to find different shops locally where I have certain things that I need. Letting go of an all or nothing attitude allows us to embrace small steps. Maybe I can't shop entirely ethically, but I can shop local and secondhand when I'm able. And that's just one example, but it's just very hard sometimes to live rurally and just not have access to things. Not only do I not have the patience to wear a dress every single day in bad weather, but I also don't have the energy to raise goats or make my bread from scratch, and that's all okay. Not only can we make more changes to our lives when we allow ourselves to be imperfect, but also we can have more fun. Too many rules about what fits a lifestyle or genre takes away a lot of the joy of what drew us to these styles and interests in the first place. I suppose in the end, I go back to one of my favorite quotes by Walt Whitman. Do I contradict myself? Very well then, I contradict myself. I am large, I contain multitudes. Sometimes embracing spring is just sitting inside on a rainy day and weaving together a flower crown of dried flowers that have been waiting all winter to be put to use. And other days it's gonna be outside in the sun and I'm okay with that balance in that mix. I'm gonna take each day as it comes. <laughs>